Virtual interviews are the mainstay of medical school interviews for 2021, and there is the potential that they are here to stay for many years to come. My name is Danny Kalani. I'm a medical student in Canada. Before getting accepted at a Canadian medical school, I applied to medical schools abroad, which involve numerous online interviews. In this video, we'll start off with an introduction to what online interviews will look like for medical schools. Then after that, we'll get into what you can do to prepare. Before we get into it, make sure to subscribe to the channel. For the next month, I'm going to be putting out a video every week on preparing for medical school interviews, so you won't want to miss that. With all of that out of the way, let's get into it. If you're at all familiar with virtual interviews, then you know that they can be done in a live format or an asynchronous format. If you know where you're interviewing, then make sure to look into how they conduct their interviews especially in this virtual format. That's going to help you prepare for the interview in a way that takes into account what the day will actually look like. Stick around to the end where we'll talk about how you can actually prepare for your interviews. So what are live interviews going to actually look like? If you have a live interview, you're going to get to directly interact with your interviewer through some sort of video conferencing software like Zoom or Skype. With live interviews, one thing you'll definitely get is the opportunity to answer follow-up questions you might not have that with asynchronous interviews. And there's also a good number of formats that you could actually be working with depending on the medical school for these live interviews. And we'll talk a little bit about each of them. One example is the University of Toronto, which is sticking by its modified personal interview. Now they're calling it the Virtual Modified Personal Interview or VMPI. The format is essentially four 12 minute long interviews with four different interviewers. When you first meet your interviewer, they're going to be the one asking you the questions rather than you watching a video or reading a prompt before going into the room. And this format gives you four opportunities to make a good impression about yourself as a candidate for medical school. Compared to multiple mini interviews, you get more time in each station, which should hopefully give you some opportunities to build some greater rapport with your interviewer. And there was actually a paper published by Hansen et al on the Toronto MPI format. On the year that the study was done, they categorized the stations into four different types. The first station is about self-reflection, the second ethical decision-making, the third collaboration, and the fourth is about values. Each station has particular aspects of your character that are being evaluated along the way. These are things like maturity, communication skills, interpersonal skills, as well as caring and conscientiousness. With other formats, we have other schools such as UBC, which have opted to do the MMI, but in a virtual format. And the MMI is also known as the multiple mini interview format. Now the MMI is similar to the modified personal interview that the University of Toronto does, but it has a few major differences. The first is that there are many more stations. Most MMIs will have between six and 10 stations. Because of resource limitations though, this means that you'll be spending less time at each station and have less time to explain your answers. The last difference is that before each station, you'll be given a couple minutes to look at a prompt and think about how you would go about answering it in front of your interviewer. The nice thing about this is that it gives you some time to think about what kind of talking points you're looking to touch on. In many formats of the MMI, interviewers are given standardized follow-up questions. These questions typically get asked once you stop talking. It's important that you give these follow-up questions some thought since there is a good reason why they were included in the first place. Oftentimes, if you miss out on one of the key points of the question, these follow-up questions will help you reorient yourself back to where you're supposed to be. Most MMIs will give you between seven to 10 minutes to answer your questions. When I was preparing for my MMI, my goal was to fill up at least five minutes of the time given to me. And with those five minutes, I wanted to prioritize having a solid answer over having a long answer. By doing this, you can cut out any ranting and you'll have a chance to answer the follow-up questions. During my interview, I actually ended up finishing some of the stations early, which is a good thing because it meant that I avoided ranting and I stuck to the points that I wanted to address. You should also know that there's a lot of creativity that goes into creating MMI questions. So you should aim to be ready for whatever comes your way. We'll touch on a few types of stations just to give you an idea of what you might see on interview day. One type of station is what I call the personal interview station. These tend to ask you questions about situations that you faced in the past, and maybe do some reflection on them. Then you have situational stations where you're given a scenario and asked about how you would approach it. These could be related to ethics, conflict resolution, or a number of other things that they'd like to assess. There are also acting stations, 
These are essentially applied situational questions. You're thrown into a scenario and you need to show what you would actually do rather than talk about what you would have done. There are also puzzle type stations where you're given some sort of puzzle to solve in front of the interviewer. If this type of station were to be done in a virtual format, I imagine that it would involve you giving instructions to the interviewer who would have to complete some sort of task. The last type of station that I wanna talk about is called a teamwork station. These usually involve working with other interviewees. The teamwork stations exist to assess how you would work with others in reality, rather than just on paper. And this is super understandable because medicine is a team game. Now for one of the less common types of medical school interviews, which is the traditional panel interview. This interview type is actually still being used by Western University's medical school. It's most similar to a traditional job interview, except you have multiple interviewers there at the same time. And you typically spend the entire interview with the same interviewers. The types of questions that you would be asked tend to involve personal, situational, and ethical questions. With all three types of live interview formats, you're bound to be faced with similar types of questions. This means that although you should be tailoring your preparation to particular interviews, preparing for one interview will help you prepare for the others. There's actually a useful document that was given to me by medical students who were helping me prepare for my interviews around a year back. This document contains numerous interview questions that touches on the personal, ethical, and situational questions that you're bound to see on interview day. These questions are super useful for practicing your approach to the interview and improving the way that you answer questions. I'll leave a link to that in the description. In my upcoming video, I'll actually be talking about how you should be approaching questions. So make sure you're subscribed to the channel if you wanna be the first to hear about that. I still haven't addressed the asynchronous interview format, which is arguably the least exciting for interviewees. This format was used a lot more commonly in 2020 when medical schools didn't have a lot of time to shift to the online format. And quite honestly, I'm not sure how popular this is going to be in 2021. Typically, you'll be given a video or written prompt and then given some time to respond to it while recording yourself on video. And you're given a set amount of time to answer and sometimes you'll get the opportunity opportunity to re-record your answer if you've messed it up. With these interviews, it can be extremely awkward to be talking to a camera. I should know since I talk to a camera for people to watch on the internet. The types of questions that you'll be asked will be pretty similar to the MMI format, except that there may not be follow-up questions. Quite honestly, I really hope that most medical schools won't be using this type of interview since they make it extremely difficult to display your uniqueness as an applicant. If you do have an interview like this, a good way to practice is to use your computer's webcam and record yourself answering some practice questions. Now that you have an idea of what these interviews will actually look like, how should you go about preparing for them? I want you to think about three main components of a good interviewee. The first is having an approach to answering questions that you can use when applicable. There are a lot of resources about this online. I started off by looking at these resources and then I went through my own trial and error process by working with medical students and going through practice questions and doing some iterational improvements. Using their feedback and suggestions, I was also able to try out some new strategies, which helped me in finding my own way of answering questions that matched my interview style. With every practice session, it's so important that you have an idea going in of what you wanna work on for that day. If you're not being intentional with your improvements, you're going to leave it up to chance, which is not the way to go. And then after every session, you'll wanna take the feedback that you were given, write it down, and then spend 20 minutes or so reflecting on that practice session. What went well, what didn't, and potentially what do you wanna work on in future sessions? This is probably the single most important thing that I did to improve my interviewing skills. The second is becoming comfortable with being interviewed. Being interviewed is naturally uncomfortable for most of us, especially because it involves talking about ourselves, which is always a touchy subject. But if you're nervous and you can't think straight, then it's bound to affect your interview performance, which we don't want. So how do we address that? I'm a naturally nervous person when it comes to doing interviews, and I tried all sorts of techniques for keeping myself calm and none of them made a dent. What did help me was finding ways to mimic the interview conditions and including that in the way that I practiced. Then repeating practice as much as possible helped me become so much more comfortable with an interviewing environment. This means practicing your interviews with people that you don't know well already, 
getting comfortable speaking in front of a computer and working within the time limitations that you'll have on interview day. If you can do this with enough repetition, you should be going into interview day feeling significantly less nervous. The third component of being a good interviewee is being prepared to talk about yourself when it's appropriate. What I recommend doing before your interviews to accomplish this is first looking through the CANMED rules. The CANMED's rules are essentially a list of expectations for how a physician conducts themselves. While you aren't expected to have these traits already going into medical school, it is helpful to look at them and see how you've applied them in your own life especially outside of a healthcare setting. The examples that you're coming up with could be as simple as something that happens at home, or they could be as formal as something that you did in an internship. After you've had a look at them and started to think about where they've been relevant in your own life, start to write down the examples and really flesh them out. Come up with some key topping points that you could use if you wanted to bring this up in an interview. One thing to note is that you can ignore the medical expert rule for the purpose of your interviews. But the important thing is that you're building a collection of examples that you can use and talk about when you're practicing and then eventually doing your interviews. One question as an example of where this would be applicable would be if I asked you to tell me about a time where you've had to deal with interpersonal conflict in your life. Now, if you have a list of your personal experiences and you familiarized yourself with them and you've gotten used to talking about them, then this would be an easy place to slot one in in your interview. Before the interview comes, you'll wanna find some time to practice talking about these experiences and improving the way that you tell it as a story. But there is a caveat that you need to know about this. Don't go memorizing your story word for word and then rehearsing it in front of your interviewer. That's not gonna work well. To keep it from coming out as unnatural, you'll want to tailor your story to a particular question and focus on aspects of stories that are the most relevant to the particular questions. So to put it all together, in preparing for your interviews, you'll want to develop an approach to answering questions and you should be improving that approach through practice, iterational improvements, and feedback. Then you'll want to get comfortable with being interviewed and you'll do that by mimicking the interview conditions and repeating practice interviews with those conditions with a high frequency. And lastly, you'll want to prepare some talking points about your life experiences and then get better at telling it as a story and tailoring that story to particular interview questions. That way you'll be ready to put these life experiences into action whenever the right question comes your way. That's all for now. If you have any questions for me, leave them in the comments and thank you for watching.